Modern warfare has shown the importance of tanks in the scheme of things and the value of efficient and properly controlled defence against these sticky customers. Weapons are only as effective as the skill of the men who use them, but the anti-tank rifle in the hands of the man who knows when to fire can do immense damage to these battleships of the land. The sights on the anti-tank rifle can be adjusted to 500 and 300 yards. The .55 bullet which it fires will penetrate light Hun tanks like this British one up to 500 yards, provided the angle of impact is 30 degrees or less. Now, what exactly does this mean in plain English? Well, we'll get Company Sergeant Major Instructor Maber to give us the lowdown. Maber! Sir? Will you explain this angle of impact business? Certainly, sir. Now, let us assume that the tip of my stick actually represents the nose of the bullet, and the remainder of my stick, the path of the bullet. A strike, head on, to 30 degrees, above, or below, or on either side, will result in a penetration. What we want to avoid, however, is the glancing blow, like this, where the bullet will bounce off and clear. Now, a bullet glancing in that way may result in penetrating a little way, but it will be held up by the thickness of the metal. I think that's all I can tell you, sir. Thank you very much, Sergeant Major. With the anti-tank rifle, as with all other weapons, we shoot to kill. And once again, common sense plays its part in deciding the moment when fire should be opened. Everybody in the platoon is trained to use the anti-tank rifle, and any section may be detailed to carry it. Two men in each section should be earmarked for the job. Here, then, is the anti-tank rifleman with his observer protector controller. In sighting the anti-tank rifle, we must have a good field of fire, if possible, of not less than 500 yards. Remember that the blast and flash of the rifle is a thing to be reckoned with. It would soon give the position away, so the muzzle must be well concealed. The anti-tank rifle position is so placed that if and when it fires, the range should be considerably under 300 yards. The OPC has taken up a position from which he can sight and inform his pal of any likely movement by enemy tanks. Hello, what have we here? Or do these old eyes of mine deceive me? Tanks! Okay, I'll fix them. All right, but make sure you do fix them. Tanks are ugly enemies, so for heaven's sake, don't lose your head. Up the road come the tanks at a fair bat. They should be German ones, but we haven't got any over here yet. So we're using light British ones for our purpose. If we handle this carefully, it's in the bag. Let's hope the rifleman doesn't fire too soon. Hey, not yet, not yet. Meet it miles too soon. And the tanks take the hint and leg it away into the tall grass. All he's done is to give his position away while this silly twerp looks this way and that, trying to make out where the target's gone. And wondering what it's all about. A tank with a personal grievance is on its way towards him and out to get him. Crashing through the undergrowth, it carries out a flanking attack on the position and bobs your uncle. That's one tank to the good and one anti-tank rifleman definitely to the bad. Was it the fault of the rifle? No. Our anti-tank rifle is a very good weapon and the best in the world for the job it has got to do. Let us see how this weapon should be handled from the same defensive position with the same field of fire, but by a rifleman who knows his job. The cover is the same. There's his OPC on the job. This is his field of view as before. And here comes the enemy up the road towards the position. Tank. OK. The rifleman springs to action and covers the road, his eyes glued to the sights and keeping a wary eye open for anything that may turn up. The OPC carefully watches the target until it is within the field of view of his rifleman. Here, the rifleman picks it up, and with his sights aligned on the leading tank, he waits for his prey to enter the trap. Here are three reasons why you should wait for it. 
Nice going, Rifleman. You've certainly scared off the rest of that bunch, and as for the results on hand, one tank, very dead. Two anti-tank riflemen, very much alive, with the wisdom of knowing when to fire. The Thompson submachine gun, Tommy gun to you and me, is a most deadly weapon when you know how to use it. It's a short-range weapon and very effective up to 50 yards when skillfully handled. It can be fired from the waist, by a sense of direction, or from the shoulder using the sights. And with its terrific rate of fire, its effect on morale is very great indeed. But when to fire it, that's the point we all want to know. Here then is the situation. The corporal, who is the patrol leader, has spotted the enemy. He has seen something coming up the road directly to his front and with good cover both to left and right. Signalling to his section to go to ground, he himself takes up a fire position. Oh, much too soon. The Germans dash for cover well out of effective range. Looks as if this frightful looking blighter had a personal grievance to air that corporal. And that's that. 200 yards away they were, but the Germans knew when to fire, and so, unhindered, continued to advance. Bad. Very bad. Very bad indeed. In fact, bloody awful. Our corporal didn't know the first rules of the game. He opened fire too soon and gave the enemy the initiative. Now, here's the same situation, but with a slightly different slice of country. A friendly patrol is out, and from the undergrowth in the background emerges one of them, the left flank man moving carefully from cover to cover and keeping a wary eye open for the enemy. Next comes the corporal, covering him by the fire of his Tommy gun and also moving cautiously forward, while the remainder of the patrol brings up his rear. All are ready for instant action from whatever quarter the threat may come. The left flank man moves forward to the cover of a bush when suddenly he freezes. Enemy scouts have been seen advancing up the road towards them. Burn! With a warning word, he drops into cover while the corporal leaps forward to gain the gorse bush to his front from which he can follow every movement of the enemy. On come the scouts down the road, but the corporal's not going to be satisfied with such small change. Seeing that the enemy is about to signal on the main body of his formation, he gets all set for the great event. No enemy in sight, if you only knew. So on they come, a full section of them, into the jaws of death. Their scouts make off on their next bound. That's right, Corporal, to hell with them. We want the section. Let them go, we'll attend to them after we put those other fellows on the spot. Any moment now, Oh, nice shooting. Now, single fire from the shoulder. One, two, three, four, and five. Well done, Corporal, that's what we wanted. The signal to advance, and on we go. That fellow knew when to fire. He shot to kill, and then some. Aircraft. Aircraft, when within effective range, should be engaged by all available fire. Rifles and light automatics are the answer to the dive bomber and ground strafer, and very effective they are. Low flying planes, by reason of their speed and unsteady flight, have much less chance of hitting you than you have of blasting them from the sky. The rifle can quickly be brought from the slung position into aim and fired. Ten rounds from a fully charged magazine can do immense damage to that hostile hedge hopper. And for this reason, all sights, when on the march, are set at 500 yards against the enemy from the sky. So with the Bren gun, spitting destruction from the hip and from the shoulder, sending that jetty plane crashing down to earth. Somewhere in England, a platoon is on the line of march, in AA formation, making every use of cover and with a gas of air sentry marching on ahead, keeping a weather eye on the sky for hostile aircraft and with an ear for the sound of droning engines. All magazines are fully charged and all sights set at 500 yards.
stage is set, and up goes the curtain on Act One. Aircraft action! Aircraft action, and the platoon spring to it, deploying into cover on either side of the road. Aircraft front! Section leaders order aircraft front. So far, so good. Very far! There we go again. Opening up when those planes must be a good 4,000 feet. Do they look close enough to you? Well, by what these planes see from up there, they're mighty high. They can only spot you at that height because you've given your position away. You've asked for it and you've got it. Lucky you aren't bombed up as well. But while all this has been going on, a jetty plane in another sector of the sky has come crashing down to earth. Who done that? One section of riflemen done that. A dive bomber had the temerity to attack them, but they were stalwart chaps who knew their stuff. They knew when to fire. And this is how they did it. There they go, under cover at the side of the road, but Jerry's suspicious, dives to attack. A warning order, aircraft front. Just that, and no more. And the plane, though as yet well out of range, comes diving at them at 400 miles an hour. It's pulling out. And that's how it's done. The sentry comes out of cover and gives the attack over, and so, having charged their magazines and confident and ready for any other Messerschmitt, Dornier, Junkers, or what have you, on they go once more. They had the tools, they finished the job, they knew when to fire, they shot to kill. The Bren gun, in its role of protective cover for transport columns under cover, is ideally suited for the job. But are the Bren gunners? Aircraft action! So far, so good. Alive and ready for action. Aircraft, run! Weapon fire! And so, once again, off they go, firing at a mere speck in the sky. He hasn't a hope in hell of hitting it, but that pilot's watching the ground like a hawk. But just such a welcome signpost as this fellow's putting up. Has he seen anything? Who knows? And planes have radios to whistle up bombers on just such a target. And here they are, sooner than usual. I'm glad I'm not a transport driver in that particular wood. Transport blitz, lives lost and all because that damn fool Bren gunner lost his head. And now let's do it right. The Bren gun crews are in position, ready and alert. Aircraft action! The alarm is given. Aircraft front! Over the top flies Jerry, searching, searching, but he's seen nothing to indicate the problem. ...of troops or transport. goes on as usual within the confines of the woods. 